doubt, because we have promised to introduce you to the fairyland of chemistry. A somewhat bold promise, we admit, because most of you probably think of chemistry as a bundle of dry and boring facts, while well, fairyland is all that is beautiful and full of poetry and imagination. But we hope to prove to you that science is full of beautiful uh, pictures, real poetry, and wonder-working fairies. And what is more, I promise you that fairies shall love you, even when you are old and gray, as well as when you're young. Mm -hmm. You will be able to call them up wherever you wander, by land or by sea, through meadow or through wood, through water or through air. And though they will always be invisible, you will see their wonderful power at work around you. So follow us now into our favorite professor's lab. In this magical land of brilliantly colored liquids, unusual smells and bubbling pots, the dear professor will introduce young Joe and Jesse to the fairyland of chemistry. He will, in fact, introduce these curious youngsters to us. Come along now, the lesson is about to begin. <laughs> Welcome to my laboratory. Wow. Oh, Professor, what is this funny looking stuff? Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope you have learned a lesson that one curious sniff could cost you your life. What is it, anyhow? Gas. Gas? But I thought gas was light. Father told us so last year when we had a balloon that it would make it float away. But that's not floating away. It's just hanging out at the bottom of the dry there, even with the cover off. This is a heavy gas. Where did you get it, Professor? Out of salt. Do you really mean that that green smoke came out of salt, the salt that we eat? What would you say if I told you that that salt was made of fairies? <laughs> oh, fairies? Fairies are splendid, but they're not real, you know. I wish they were. Well, that gas is nothing more nor less than a collection of real fairies. <laughs> oh, yes, and those fairies didn't like it when Jessie tried to swallow them. They kicked and nearly choked her. Do they have real legs and arms? They certainly seem to have arms. And I suppose they have legs, for they run around briskly enough sometimes. What are their names? The wise man who first found out about them named the whole tribe Chlorine. <laughs> but this is only one tribe. There are 60 or 70 others, all different and all having different names, like sodium, yeah. hydrogen, <laughs> and oxygen. And even more tribes have been discovered since the dear professor was teaching his lessons 125 years ago. I suppose they must have wings. Most fairies do. Yes, they would hardly be fairies if they had not wings. Can they fly? Well, certainly some tribes that are gases can fly. Yeah. Our chlorine fairies were certainly flying about, wouldn't you say? Now, what would you imagine happens when fairies are liquid? Their wings are folded down. But they must still use their legs to run around the way liquid runs away when it's spilled. True. And what if I were to put that liquid out in the cold half an hour? Then it would turn into a solid. They'd tuck up their legs and stop running around. They wouldn't be able to move anymore. Indeed. And if we were to warm the fairies up again, what do you think would happen? Would their wings and legs unfold? Can you make all kinds of fairies unfold their wings just by heating them? The heat seems to agree with them, don't you think? <laughs> but some kinds of heat some have to be heated very hot indeed before they'll stir, and cold has just the opposite effect. Don't their arms ever freeze down? No, never. Wherever they may be, nothing ever makes them relinquish their hold on each other, unless it be just long enough to change hands with other fairies. Change hands? Why would they change hands? Aha, that is for the next lesson. Aren't we charming? Aren't you delighted? <laughs> Is it, who knew that chemistry was so full of wonder? Our young friends, Jesse and Joe, seem to have learned some basic truths about us and the other tribes like us. But don't dawdle. There's more to explore in the fairyland of chemistry. Professor, tell us more about why fairies change hands. Like people, 
The fairies are very much influenced by the company they keep. We already talked before about the states in which the fairies can live. Some of them fly around. Those are gases. While some fold down their wings and just use their legs. Liquids. And some lose their legs altogether and barely move at all. Solids. Now, when tribes go into partnership, they must be agreed in the matter. For instance, if chlorine goes into partnership with a tribe that keeps its hands and feet folded, either chlorine loses its powers of motion, or the other tribe begins to fly about with it. And sometimes, curiously enough, two frivolous tribes, both gases, that fly around everywhere when they are by themselves, grow very steady and sedate when they unite with each other. How do they choose which fairies they partner with? Members of the same tribe cling to each other through thick and thin. Till members of some other family happen along. We go dancing off, joined hands, well satisfied as ever. But we are not satisfied unless we have our hands full. We must have told them something. You see, they have their likes and dislikes, just the same as we've learned. We will live together with some tribes for years without offering so much as a handshake. Others we like better and join with them with very little urging. And yet others fall so violently in love that they rush to unite with each other with the greatest eagerness. <laughs> And what is strange is, the more unlike two tribes are, the quicker they rush to fall in love. But they seem to have a special dislike for their relatives and delight in tripping them up or supplanting them in the affections of other tribes. The hateful creatures. <laughs> Look out, Jesse. They may hear you and nearly choke you to death. It's true. We chlorine fairy are a savage bunch. Half as volatile as our sodium fairies over there. Yeah. Bring some water over here to us. You'll see what happens. <laughs> but curiously enough, when we join together, our temperaments improve. The nastiness melts away, and we are pleasant enough to sit at your dinner table. <laughs> well, Professor, you said before that the chlorine fairies live in salt. Not merely in the salt, dear. They are the salt. Pure salt contains not a thing but these couples of chlorine and sodium. But if the sodium and chlorine fairies are salt, and we eat the salt fairies, we're as bad as cannibals. Cannibals? No, no, no. It doesn't hurt the fairies at all to be eaten. They're so small that we cannot poss possibly shut our teeth closely enough to hit them. <laughs> That's a relief. But Professor, I don't understand. Salt is a solid, and chlorine is a gas. How can that be? Oh, 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 oh there is a thirst for knowledge with a vengeance. Let's see. Would you like to see me coax my fairies to create salt? Yes! Do you remember what happens when the fairies turn into a solid? Their wings are folded down. And their legs, too. Yes, and when they're in this state, they can get very much nearer each other. Now our chlorine friends have a great liking for the other tribes of fairies. Their name is sodium. And when they all join hands, they make salt. Let's start with this bit of sodium. We can warm it up over a flame. It's melting. It looks like a bright silvery bead. And I can take this spoon of Sodium and add it to this jar of chlorine. Look at that bright light and all that smoke. They must be burning up. They're not burning up. They're just joining hands. You'll see by and by. We chlorine fairies like to stick together. But when a pair of us sodium fairies come along, we can't wait to switch partners. This is what the professor calls joining hands. And we all love each other so much that we create lots of heat when we come together. That's the bright light that Jesse and Joe are seeing. Professor, look what's left. It's just whitish powder. Would you like to have a taste?
It tastes like salt. That's because it is salt. See how much they have changed since they joined hands? Well, they certainly don't taste like chlorine. And now they're solid. Isn't the fairyland of chemistry a magical world? Well, we certainly think so. But you think we're lying, don't you? Well, you think the fairies don't really exist. Well, maybe that's true. Maybe. But what if we told you that fairies can also be called atoms? Every time the professor used the word fairy, he could also use the word atom. And wouldn't that sound just like your chemistry textbook? And wouldn't you rather think about fairies? <laughs> this fairyland is all around you. It's in the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the air you breathe, in everything you see and everything you do. You look closely and let your imagination run wild. You too can experience the fairyland of chemistry. Thanks.